Imagine you record a video of yourself and then you upload it on YouTube or Instagram. And the next day a friend comes up to you and says, you looked like a robot in front of the camera. How, how would you feel? Probably you would feel hurt, probably you would feel angry, but most probably you would be speechless. And that speechlessness is a very common problem in everyday life. So when we are speechless, what should we do? How should we handle that? What I can say is that when we feel speechless, we feel powerless. And this is not a beautiful feeling. So let's come back to this attack. You look like a robot in front of the camera. How should you respond? Well, the bad idea would be to justify and explain yourself and say, yeah, it was my very first video, I'm very sorry, I shouldn't really do it, and maybe I should be better over time. But that's not witty, that's not smart. A more clever response would be to play along with this verbal attack and to say something like, this is a very good observation of my body language and voice, sir. Or maybe even cooler, why not pull your best Arnold Schwarzenegger impression and say, I'm a friend of Sarah Connor. That was a mistake. In the name of the state of California, I have to terminate you. Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> and now be honest, how many times have you been attacked verbally, but still you couldn't give a response? Well, those speechless days are over because today I'm going to give you the best quick-wittedness technique of all time. So. Before I give you this quick witness technique, let me tell you that I myself was for many years speechless. I was 10 years old when my parents and I emigrated from Ukraine to Germany. And on the first day in school, I couldn't speak any word of German. I was speechless, I felt powerless. The problem was that on the very first day of my German school, we had to write a dictation and I could only write my first name and my last name on the piece of paper. I felt speechless and I felt powerless. Ten years later, same situation. I learned German, I was fluent already, but again I was in a situation of speechlessness. This time I went into a debate club in Munich and started debating against other students. And in the debate club, maybe you know that, there are students, they attack each other, refute the arguments, ask killer questions, and most of the time I did not know how to respond. So in the middle of my speech, I was again speechless. I was surprised, I was paralyzed, that didn't feel good. But this time I decided there must be a way. There has to be something how I could overcome that speechlessness. And maybe you ask yourself, what does, your, what does my story have to do with you? You probably don't come from Ukraine, you probably didn't go to the debate society, but like me, you probably don't know that there are over 30 quick-wittedness techniques that help you to counter those below-the-belt attacks. And today, I'm going to give you the best of them. In one word, the best technique against all verbal attacks is irony. Or to be more precise, there are two sides of irony. There is the light irony, where you are witty and funny and give a nice self-ironic response. Or there is the dark side of irony, there you are sarcastic and evil and even a little bit unfair towards your attacker. So let me explain the mechanism behind the irony, behind this idea of how to make fun of a verbal attack. The idea is that you have to lead the verbal attack ad absurdum. And that means you create a so illogical consequence that it is absurd and it becomes funny. Like in the example with Sebastian, where he was attacked as being like a robot, so the absurd idea to do is to become a robot or maybe even to become the Terminator. And let me give you three other examples so it becomes more clear. I have a friend, his name is Alejandro. And Alejandro is a waiter, and oftentimes he hears the same sentence over and over again. He hears the sentence, you are too slow, Alejandro. And with a light side of irony, Alejandro could respond, well, sir, I have two modes of operation, slow and not moving. Which one should I turn on for you? 
or with a dark side of irony, he could respond, well, sir, I have a strange feeling that I'm going to be even slower towards your table now. Or another example from my friend Mona. She has a very, very evil neighbor. Unfortunately, one day the neighbor told Mona the following sentence. The neighbor told her, you need some psychological treatment, my dear. With a light side of irony, Mona could respond, well, to be honest, three psychologists are working with me and so far, no one could figure me out. And with a dark side of irony, if she wants to be a little more evil, she could ask the neighbor, remember when I asked you for your opinion? Me neither. And the last example I want to give you is against myself. Under one of my YouTube videos, a person commented, you, Vlad, you are a professional speaker for a kindergarten. And with a light side of irony, I could respond, thanks a lot for the compliment. You know how hard it is to entertain such a young crowd. Four-year-olds, they are the worst. Or with a dark side of irony, I could say, let's compare our lives. I'm here on stage while you are commenting anonymously on YouTube. Which life do you prefer? And obviously, you can see that the dark side of irony is a little bit evil, so I wouldn't recommend it for everyday conversations with your family, with your friends, with your coworkers. But sometimes, when it's from a random person in the street or some anonymous comment on YouTube, you could definitely have fun with a little bit of dark irony. And by the way, the king of quick-wittedness often you, uh, chose the dark path. And the king of quick-wittedness is, of course, Winston Churchill. There are tons of beautiful quotes by him where he has attacked the other person and he countered any verbal attack. And one of my favorites is uh, as following, goes as follows. One person attacked him during a party and said, Winston, you're drunk. And what's more, you're disgustingly drunk. And Winston replied in his typical Winston Churchill style, My dear, and you're ugly, and what's more, you're disgustingly ugly. But tomorrow I shall be sober, and you will still be disgustingly ugly. And of course, this is a pretty brutal put down, and I don't recommend that kind of stuff to you and me. We are mortals, we shouldn't do that. At this stage, after I describe to you the technique of leading the verbal attack at absurdum, to play along with that, you might say, good, okay, nice Vlad, good technique, but you know, I'm not the very ironic person. It's not for me to lead an attack at absurdum. That doesn't really help. That's not who I am. And that's why I brought to you three mindset tools that you can use in order to install irony in your brain like an app. The tool number one is be playful. Oftentimes, people don't mean their verbal attacks that seriously. They just try to provoke you. They just try to test their, your boundaries, how you react to them. So the same you should do with your response. You shouldn't be too serious. Be playful with your attack. Don't be afraid to say something that's not 100% serious. Mindset tool number two, be imperfect. The most problem that most people have is they try to come up with a perfect response that will be quoted in the history books. Now, have a look at my own examples. They're not Winston Churchill examples. My talk won't be quoted in 10 or 20 years. My examples and my responses were okay. And this is exactly what I ask from you. If you have an okay response, this is absolutely enough. So, Perfection blocks your brain. Don't be perfect. Instead, give away any answer. And you can't believe how important it is not to remain speechless. You remember this first attack? You look like a robot in front of the camera. This is an attack against Basti, a friend of mine. He's also a coach. And after he heard this attack, he wanted to come up with a perfect response, but he didn't. And the consequence was that his speechlessness led to the fact that for the last three years he never uploaded a new YouTube video again. So the idea that you are speechless is sometimes not just an inconvenience, but sometimes it can change the whole future that you have. 
And no need to say that it was bad for Basti's business, but also for his self-worth. And that's why it's so important not to be perfect and just to say something that's imperfect. And number three, be practicing. That's my third mindset tool for you. And that means in the next conversation with me after the talk or with your friends or with your coworkers, whenever they say something that is slightly hurtful or could be like a subliminal attack, try to be funny, try to be witty, try to lead this situation ad absurdum. The more you practice, the better you get in those verbal attacks. All right. At this stage, you have the technique of how to be witty, dark irony or light irony, and you have the mindset tools. And this talk could be over, but it isn't, because I have a confession to make. Although I know over 30 of those quick wittedness techniques, sometimes I myself am totally speechless. The first two, three seconds, I have no idea what to answer. I have no light irony response where I'm funny, I have no dark irony response where I am extremely evil. So, what do I do? And there is a one thing that I have brought along with me for you that I call the standard follow-up question. And this is just one sentence that you can say in every situation. So, whenever in the two or three seconds after a verbal attack I cannot come up with a perfect funny Winston Churchill response, I go to this same line. And the line goes as follows. What do you mean by that? And this simple question is very, very powerful because it gives you time to think. While the other person is explaining why he attacked me, I have additional 10 to 15 seconds and hopefully there I can come up with a perfect and witty response. So imagine after the talk, somebody comes up to me and says, hey Vlad, nice talk, nice story about Ukraine, but your slides, they were actually horrible. I didn't like them at all. My response in a standardized follow-up technique? What do you mean by that? And then I make this curious face and invite the other person to explain himself. And besides the advantage that you get additional 15 or 20 seconds of time while the other person is answering my question, you also have a second advantage that this technique is super easy. Every five-year-old could remember the words what do you mean by that? You don't have to be a genius, this is just the one sentence. So officially for you, this is a very historic day, because officially you are now a quit, quick-witted person. So every time somebody attacks you and tells you that you maybe got a little bit fat, you know what to do. You ask a standardized follow-up question. At the end of my talk, let's do something special. Let's do a one-minute workshop where you can look into my head. What do I mean by that? I mean that I just take another two examples and I tell you how I actually come up with these absurd and funny responses. So let's say somebody tells me, Ah, Vlad, go to hell. So my thinking process in my head would be, how can I not defend myself against this uh, attack, but swing along with it, play with it, and lead it to an absurd consequence? So, go to hell, in my head I would think, okay, actually I'm going there, or I have been there already, or actually that's where I live. And any of those associations I would pick, because I don't have to be perfect, and I would respond something like, well, sir, that's exactly where I'm coming from. And that response is good. It's good enough, it's imperfect, but that's exactly what we are looking for. Or imagine somebody really told me, oh Vlad, the last time you gained some weight. And again, my thinking process would be not to defend myself against that, to say, oh, I didn't have time for working out and I ate a little bit too much. That's not witty. What you want to do is you want to exaggerate the verbal attack and lead it ad absurdum. So if somebody calls you, you become fat, you exaggerate and you say, uh, well, maybe I was even fatter, maybe I was like three elephants, and those would be my first associations. And then my imperfect response would be, well, I'm lucky you see me this week because three weeks ago I weighed more than three elephants. As you can see, again, those responses will not go into the history books. But the idea is that it's better to have an imperfect response than to have no response at all. Because speechlessness is a terrible feeling. And sometimes people think over it days, 
and weeks and sometimes even decades because they didn't answer in this crucial situation. They remained speechless and this is why I want you to understand that language is power and if you are speechless, you feel powerless. So in the end of my talk, I would like to wish you lots of fun with your new two big techniques. Use irony, be it light irony or dark irony. And if you cannot come up with a good, funny, witty response after two or three seconds, then use my standard follow-up question. Curious face and ask the other, what do you mean by that? And at the end of the talk, I want you to be three things. And this is be playful, be imperfect, and be practicing. Thank you.